let's avoid getting into Trump because today we've got what some say is the original Epstein saga due to the short sentences, chronic lack of inst- investigation and the high sort of elite upper class networks. Do you know who else who sh- oh. should be under investigation? Who? The 50% of our viewers who are not subscribed. Oh, oh my God. Thanks for telling <laughs> us that. Oh my God. 50%. 50 whole percent so half of half of you watching right now aren't subscribed so you see i don't know it's bottom right bottom right yeah so i've even given you directions to it (laughs) bottom right (laughs) click bang you've done it subscribed everybody's happy and now we're rich off of your money let's get into it First off, I'm going to introduce Mark Dutro, give a few sort of life details, and then we'll go into the crimes, and then we'll go into the case. Right, so Mark Dutro was born in 1956, the eldest of four of five siblings. Victor and Janine, his parents both teachers, as was his accomplice. We'll get to that. First years of his life, he actually spent in Congo, but returned to Belgium, where he lived for the rest of his life. And Dutro was reported that he was repeatedly beaten by his parents. And that's pretty important context for what we come to later. His parents divorced in 71 and he left home at that point as a teenager. He then became a male prostitute. He married at the age of 20 and had two children. But he admitted to beating his wife, cheating on her and they separated in the 80s. One of his mistresses was a woman called Michelle Martin, who... I mentioned earlier and who will be sort of is the overarching accomplice in the um in the case and i think she's actually she is actually free now she is a free lady um they divorced in 2003 whilst in prison and they got married while both were in prison a bit of a weird thing it's got nothing to do with the case but it's just a weird context he was an unemployed electrician and had a long criminal history involving car theft muggings and dealing drugs and the coupling of an abusive childhood with sort of teenage prostitution obviously as you might know emerges as a pattern when it comes to abuse and people getting taken advantage of in february 1987 and this is where we get into the actual crimes mark dutro and his mistress michelle martin were arrested for their involvement in the abduction of seven young girls from 11 to 18. So they got nicked in 1987 for it. A girl called Axel in 1985, they actually dropped off at home in the same van they kidnapped her in the next day and she went on to testify against them along with a few other girls that they let loose, which again is important context that I tell you that not all the girls were released. In April 1989, he was finally sentenced to 13 and a half years in prison after the abduction of seven young girls. Yeah, I'll say that again. The abduction of seven young girls, he was sentenced to 13 years and he only served three and a half because he showed good behaviour. So he was let out in 92 on parole. The man who signed off on this early release was then Belgian Minister of Justice Melchior Waterle, who went on to become a judge in the European Court of Justice in Luxembourg. Melchior was later... (laughs) Climbing the ropes, yeah, I mean. (laughs) Melchior was later forced to resign after it turned out he had a bit of a habit getting sex offenders out of jail early. Of course, little did he know at the time he was freeing the most famous in Belgium's history. During Dutro's time in prison, he was able to convince a psychiatrist that he was disabled, resulting in a government pension on release that carried on all the way to when he was sentenced in 2004. He also received sleeping pills and sedatives from the doctor, which he would later use to control the abducted girls. Upon releasing Dutro the first time, the parole board received a warning letter written by his own mother to the prison director stating how she felt he was grooming young girls and taking them home. Weirdly, he came to own seven houses shortly after his release. Most of them stayed vacant and he used three of them, or we know of three of them, were used to torture young girls. This is something we'll look at a bit closer 
as we get into this. But his house in Marcinelle near Charleroi, oh, that's probably not pronounced right. In fact, I know it ain't, where we live most of the time. He started to construct a concealed dungeon in the basement, hidden behind a massive concrete door disguised as a shelf. This cell was 2.15 meters long, so about seven feet, less than a meter wide, about three feet, and about 5.4 feet high. So this this was a box. This wasn't like a an a, you probably you couldn't even fit an adult comfortably in there. Of course, whilst he was building this, he had seven homes and was still given state assistance. I'll have to keep dropping that back in there because it's actually okay. You got to remember that when he went into prison, before he was given the state assistance, what he went in for, he went in for abducting and hurting seven young girls aged from 11 to 18 and somehow he had seven state-owned homes and was on state assistance on the 24th of june 1995 so we're jumping forward here eight-year-old classmates julie and melissa were kidnapped after going for a walk by detro and one of his accomplices and brought to his house in marcinel where he was building the dungeon as he called it Dutro kept them in prison in the dungeon he had created, repeatedly abused them and produced videos of the abuse. Two months later, in the early hours of 23rd of August, Dutro and accomplice Michael Levere kidnapped Anne Marshall and Effie Lambrex, two teenage girls who were on their way back to their holiday home following a night out. With Lejeune, uh, with Melissa and the other young girl already in the dungeon, the two older girls were kept chained up in a bedroom. In September, according to Mistress Martin, the original accomplice, Lambrax and Marshall, the older girls, were drugged and brought to Jume, where Dutro and accomplice Bernie Weinstein... <laughs> Whoa. I never it. No, it's not. But that's exactly what I thought. I thought, I thought you fucking what? <laughs> uh, yeah. I thought I'd just solved everything. <laughs> when I saw that. <laughs> but I know I digress. He, um, an accomplice, Bernard Weinstein, killed them by burying them in a hole. And around the time of Lambrex and Marshall's deaths, Weinstein and a man named Philippe Divers stole a van and hid it in a hangar. After it was found there by the hangar's owner, it was taken away by the police. But Dutro and Weinstein suspected that Divers and his friend Pierre had betrayed them. Uh, Pierre Rochelle had betrayed them and on the night of the 4th of November wishing to interrogate these two about the van, Dutro and Weinstein lured them into Weinstein's home in Jumet, drugged, sequestered them before leaving to go to Rochelle's house to search for clues about the van. There they found his girlfriend, Benedict Jadot whom they took back with them to Jumet and questioned before leaving again to pick up another person but they forgot to tie Jadot up she escaped, alerted a neighbour who called the police. And with Weinstein already wanted by police, Dutro decided to kill him to prevent his own capture. He kidnapped uh -huh. Weinstein and held him in the dungeon at his house in Marcinelle. And during this time, he let the two younger girls roam freely around the house. So he swapped the girls out with the man and these girls are now living in the house. Um, and after feeding um, Weinstein food laced with rehypnol, Dutro placed hose clamps around Weinstein's testicles until Weinstein told him where his money was hidden. Dutro then killed Weinstein by burying him in a hole on his property, as in Dutro's property. And in December, well, he buried him alive. Uh, I, I, near enough. They don't. <laughs> was he alive yeah. or not? I don't. I don't know. But there's like conflicting reports oh. that he was like, sort of half dead, God, not I'm unconscious. Imagine being buried alive. Bro, it's Fucking not. Even, yeah. That's one of those ones that's a bit like drowning and that that you, just <coughs> don't, you don't even want to think about for longer than like two seconds. It's just like, <laughs> no, that's proper <laughs> scary, man. Fuck that shit. Um, I mean, don't swear. That's naughty. Um, F that S. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, according, so he's buried him in a hole. He's buried Weinstein in a hole. Um, and Dutro later being recognised by Pierre Rochelle. If you remember, that's one of the guys they, him and Weinstein kidnapped when uh, the police found out about their van and they assumed that they were grassed up, which they weren't. Um, so p this guy, Pierre Rochelle, recognised Dutroit out and about 
uh, told the police and Dutro was arrested. And according to both Dutro and Martin, the mistress, the two younger girls were still alive in the house at the time of Dutro's arrest in December. And Dutro had ordered Martin to leave new food and water for the girls in the dungeon each time they ran out. But Martin neglected to feed them, later claiming she was too afraid to go into the dungeon. So the two younger girls eventually starved to death whilst he was in prison and he buried their bodies in the garden near to that of Weinstein. Um, what, he buried them when he got out of prison? Yeah, well, by the time, yeah, by the time he got out of prison, um, oh. one time he said they were barely alive and another time he said they were already dead. Um, but basically, he, he didn't want them to die. It was just that his mistress was too scared to feed them whilst he was in jail um because he was only in jail for a matter of months this time um and this is where the police start coming under fire because not only did they fail to correctly charge dutro in 89 serving just over three years for the abduction and rape of seven young girls um but following a search of dutro's residence in december 95 after this guy recognized him and called the police the police left at empty-handed after searching the residence. What they did not know was that the two girls were still alive, hidden in the basement. So Dutro's just gone into jail. The police are coming in to search the house where the mistress is and the two girls. But the police didn't realise that the two girls were in the dungeon. Owing to a lack of search dogs and gross negligence on the part of the authorities... A section of wall panelling in the basement that had recently been painted was overlooked. So, it, you, you know when someone takes a wall out of a square out of a wall and paints it back over, you can tell yeah, pretty yeah. obviously. Do you know that? I didn't know that. Oh. Yeah, you can see like when it's been painted Even over, if it's, it's the same colour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Even if it's the same the colour, you, you'll always notice yeah, the imperfections you see from a mile away. Um, and so they just completely ignored it. And behind this freshly painted segment, Detroit had constructed his veritable chamber of horrors. Despite being literal centimetres away from the victims, police did not follow through with their search, or for that matter, use any of their investigative skills as a locksmith present who opened the door for them to get in. During the search, told police that he believed he could hear cries coming from behind the wall, he was overruled by the police who dismissed the girl's last hope for rescue as mere street noise. The girls ultimately perished to starvation upon being neglected whilst he was in jail. And a year later, in 1996, Dutro and previous accomplice Lelev kidnapped a 12-year-old who was cycling to school. August that year, Dutro and Lelev kidnapped another 14-year-old as she was walking home from a local swimming pool. An eyewitness observed Detroit's van, described it, and was even able to identify part of the license plate. And on the 13th of August, Detroit, Martin and Lelev were all arrested. An initial search of Detroit's houses proved inconclusive, again. But two days later, Detroit and Lelev both made confessions. That same day, Detroit led the police to the basement dungeon inside, which Darden and Delhez, the two newer young girls were in prison and the girls were subsequently rescued so they were alive on the 17th of august so this is the day after Detro um, detroit led police to his house in sala Busse. with the help they were able to locate and exhume the bodies of the two youngest girls and bernie weinstein on the 3rd of september the remains of the two older girls were located and exhumed in Jumet, one of the other properties. And hundreds of commercial adult pornographic videos, along with a large number of homemade sex films that Dutroux had made with his mistress, Martin, were recovered from his properties. And he has been in prison ever since that day. Now, it wasn't so much the acts themselves that made this such a huge case, as disgusting and horrible as they are, that's not what blew it up. As with most public paedophile cases there's an element of cover-up mishandling and convenient inadequacy at the highest level of policing and judiciary so i was going to talk you through a few key dates all after he was released initially after only serving three years for the seven abductions 
So 92, a year after his first release from prison. Dutrow is questioned after he's seen tripping up little girls on the ice rink, then touching their genitals as he helps them up. Police were informed nothing came of it, bearing in mind he'd just come out of prison for abducting girls. November 93, exactly a year later from then, the Gendarmerie, which in France and Belgium is like the, the militarised police, but that can still act like normal police, receive word from an informant that Dutrow is building tunnels and cells in his house to keep children there as they awaited transport to foreign countries. The police found the tunnels, but accepted that Dutrow was merely building them to extend his property. Police transmitters and an unregistered rifle was also found, but again, nothing came of it. So in 93, they found the dungeon, and they just accepted his reason that he was just building an extension. That's mad. When, and just bear in mind the sizes of this room that <clears> I told you about. And it had a it had prison gate door. Metal door. Like this, <laughs> I mean, that isn't a patio. <laughs> Fucking hell. Um, late 94, so exactly a year after that, a man from Rotterdam was convicted in Brussels, near where they're from, for sexually abusing three children. He told investigators about an international paedophile network involving people from Charleroi, where these guys are from. Also in 1994, Slovak currency and an illegal Czech national were found as part of a search on one of his properties, and again, nothing came of it. In December 95, a year after that, police search one of the properties and find nothing, not even bothering to bring the sniffer dogs with them or any equipment needed to find the hidden chamber and consider that they would have known of his ex its existence because police had gone there and called it an extension. This was when the locksmith heard the girl was crying and the police said it was merely street noise. December 95, the same month, during the, ha the, s the second search of the houses of Mark Dutrow, once he'd confessed, several videotapes were found. They were never looked at. Some of them showed Dutrow constructing the dungeon in which the little girls were held, and they just never watched it. Had police looked at it, they would have found the dungeon and the two young girls before they starved to death. The videos have been in possession of the police since December 95. They had been passed on to the prosecutors in the case, but no, never to the judges. The judges were never informed of these. Furthermore, some of the videotapes were actually returned to Dutrow by police officer René Michelm without ever being looked at. So they didn't even watch them, and they just gave them back to him. The later leading investigator, Michael Borlay, said that some of the videotapes had actually disappeared and that he personally wanted them all recovered and reviewed. So, shock horror, Theresa May style, the dossier goes missing. In 1999, sorry, the videos were reportedly stolen and then some of them were returned to Dutrow secretly and in 99, some of the tapes were finally reviewed. One of them just showed Dutrow raping a young woman in Slovakia. The videos could have made it possible to identify other victims and also exactly determine the severity of the torture that the victims had to endure, etc, etc. August 96. So seven are eventually arrested in connection with Dutrow. And this include, includes Michael Nihal, who we'll look at later. Rich businessman famous for his consistent attendance at sex parties, who brushed the accusations off by stating... I could bring the government down with the information I have. Although many believe he is a big part of the story, as Lelev, one of Dutrow's original accomplices, told police that Dutrow and Nihal met frequently in a yard to, and I quote, make plans. But as the network began to unravel, Lelev stopped cooperating after telling the police he had been threatened. So, a month later... Between September 96 and January 97, a, a girl called Regina Liu gives evidence to Crime Inspector Patrick DeBates and told him about sexual abuse and sadomasochist torture she received from the age of masochist. 12. Masochist. Sadomasochist. Yeah, that word. <laughs> sadomasochist, yeah. Jesus Christ, man. Um, too many words. Well, Getting just, too French. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so then, Renault. Sure. Sadomaso? Uh, the sadomaso torture? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Oh, people in Belgium are gonna hate me. Um, <laughs> so she, yeah, so she she told the police that um, she received this sort of abuse on the age of twelve when she was given, and I quote, given by her parents to family friend Tony van der Bogart, who'd had a key to their house. And what he'd do is he would collect her from school and take her away for weekends to sex parties where she was given to other men and secretly filmed. It was highly organised, she said. Big business, blackmail, there was a lot of money involved. She was also, and this is the big one, she was also able to give minute descriptions of the places this had happened. She mentioned Detroit, Michelle Neal, and many more businessmen and politicians. According to her, this was all part of a large-scale paedophile ring. This led to 17 different hearings with judicial officials, and her revelations actually led to the reopening of historic cases of paedophilia, paedophilia due to her recollection of the rooms and buildings it happened in, including the mushroom bed case in which a girl was killed in 1984. Regina was actually at that murder and recalled some of the individual acts of abuse committed to the other victim and this all matched up with the um, um, pathology report and everything like that. So she described basically the mushroom bed. It was it was this weird like custom built bed. She managed to describe it. They found a property with the bed and then they ended up solving it. She also managed to provide the secret addresses of some of the upper class and that checked out too. She even managed to correctly describe the inside decor of many upper class politician and businessmen's houses. Bearing in mind she was a child when this happened. So, do you know what I mean? Whether something bad happened or not, what are you doing with children in your house? Simple question. Um, one, they still haven't answered. And when the new investigation started in 97, they spoke to over 300 witnesses and huge numbers also repeated some of her claims and descriptions, including a policeman. Once people could no longer deny the legitimacy of her claims, they scheduled a rereading of her hearings, but this time led by French officers with little to no understanding of Flemish. They were given badly translated documents and the results were that Inspector Patrick DeBates was dismissed, accused of leading the witness and loading questions. Two years later he was cleared and given compensation but totally removed from any assignments on pedophilia. You won't find a big case on elite pedo rings without someone who's getting somewhere being removed from the investigation. It's part and parcel. Sometime in 97... The finance department of the police discovered movements of huge sums of money into Detroit's bank account shortly after each kidnapping happened. The evidence of this was later deleted from the police filings, but as I think it was in 2006 or 2009, WikiLeaks actually managed to recover them. Um, in April 98, Detroit, while in custody, was taken to another facility so that he could look at his case files. On the way there, he overpowered a guard, stole his gun and ran into the forest to be arrested three hours later. And two government officials actually resigned out of embarrassment. But they couldn't resign over the embarrassment of everything else. <laughs> Sometime in 2001, five years after his final arrest, before they even started testing the six thousand plus hairs found in the chambers and we'll get back to that later sometime in 2002 mark reisinger was one of the psychoanalysts who supported regina Lou's claims and went on to belgium tv to say some of the court readings had been so badly translated that the questions and answers actually meant completely different things to the original so they stitched her up at the same press conference mark reisinger spoke out Regina also said that it was unbearable that still, after all the information she gave them, they still didn't use it to solve any murders. Jean Nicolas reported that 13 searches aimed at checking the veracity of certain elements of Regina's story, supposedly to help charge the mushroom bed killer, were cancelled at the last minute by the police chief. So she gave the information, everyone could corroborate it, but before when they actually went to make it official and search these properties, they were all called off at the last minute by the same police chief. The media took her story and trashed it in true witch hunt style, using every person of influence they could to assassinate her character and pretend her claims were so out there that they just couldn't be true. 
toe in the line and painting false narratives as the media so often does. But before I ask you for your knee-jerk opinion on the first part of this tragic mystery, I will make sure to confuse you further by mentioning how one of his victims, who was repeatedly told by Dutro that if she was better behaved, he could save her from, and I quote, a wicked chief, stood up in court and asked why Dutro didn't just kill her. And bear in mind that I think over the whole ordeal, at least four girls were freed or escaped. And in a later interview by Dutro's then lawyer, Julian Pierre relayed what Dutro told him about this. And he said, in Dutro's words, do you realise that no one has ever asked me why I chose that house, that region? My idea was to carry out mass kidnappings of children and then to create, in a mine shaft, a sort of underground city where good, harmony and security would prevail. So a question to ask yourself as the audience at this point, as you ponder this mystery until part two is out, which you will watch, um, <laughs> we know Detroit was abused and found himself in the world of prostitution at a young age. Could he have convinced himself that by not selling these girls to certain abusers or keeping them away from wicked chiefs and under his control for longer than needed, that he was almost a, a double agent in the world of upper class pedo rings, saving them from what he saw as the nasty elite? Because you do have to remember that there is precedent for people that have been abused to not see if they then carry that out on someone else they don't see it as abuse but they see anything worse than that as what we'd see it like do you know what i mean yeah kind of so so yeah so someone that's used to fighting doesn't think fighting's that bad but someone getting yeah. stabbed is yeah. horrific do you know what i mean yeah, yeah. I get, it's, I get, it's that yeah, sort of thing you. So, basically, this end in '96. Sorry, when he when this was first sort of blowing up, um, three hundred thousand to seven hundred and fifty thousand Belgians took part in a silent march on the Palace of Justice, and this is the biggest protest in Belgium's history. They knew Detroit would be prosecuted, but they also knew they'd never lift up the curtain and open the public's eye to some of the accusations thrown at not only the elites, but all the way up to the royal family itself. It didn't work, nothing has changed, and if anything, the Detroit case seems to have kicked the elites into cover-up overdrive, and we seem to just be watching this happen over and over again, i.e. Epstein, Prince Andrew, etc., etc. This, this is a spitball, and none of us are going to have the answer here, but... What do you think it will really take to get to any sense of truth or justice when it comes to these networks? And do you think that you do you think we actually could without tearing it all down? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Do you think there's um, do you think there's actually any way of because obviously do you know what I mean? Seven hundred and fifty thousand people protest and it still didn't do anything. That was in ninety six. He didn't even. Dutro didn't even get charged till 2004. Do you, what's what's the um? I don't want to say what's the answer because we won't know what the answer is. But yeah, do you it's actually think it's possible? Hmm. I'm not so sure. There's there's too much money involved. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> there's too much money involved, and no one. I think the problem is, all these all these people involved none of them want to sell the rest down the river because they'll get they'll get suicided off as well yeah do you know what i mean so if say if say one of the big businessmen who was involved basically came out and went oh it's all of these lot the reason i sent this money was because of this blah 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 then there's a hunt there's i think there's too many people involved yeah that like well, even if he outs 10 of them mm. He get out a hundred of them, but then they got to. Pr it's not only that they got to say it; they got to prove it as well. Yep. You got to have yep. evidence for it, which is difficult. Part which is well, it sort of brings back to the Epstein thing with. Um, it's like where are all the videotapes that we've heard yeah. so much about. Yeah. We've heard about. We've heard about all these videotapes. We've heard of people actually seeing these videotapes. Yep. Which I don't quite believe, and it's like. If 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 there was all these videotapes and everything, where where are they? Yeah. Oh, well, someone's got rid of them. Okay, well, who was on the island then? Do you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. And it's like 
and it, it it sort of brings up the question of even when you were saying like that policeman was taken off the case and that yeah. who took him off the case because clearly there's something to do with them do you know what i mean yeah the courts yeah. the courts yeah, did everyone and that's the thing they bring it sort of shows that the people in power are kind of so fucking powerful that it's beyond it's be, it's beyond what we can do the only way we can do it is things like what's going on now and just start Slowly. fucking start bringing violence to them do you know what i mean because you have you almost have to in a way yeah. not that i'm inciting violence but it's like how yeah. we, how are you gonna how are you gonna how are you gonna take something down what by doing a big a big silent march like, mm. yeah well this is it if they'd have burnt down the court of justice in 96 they probably would have solved the crime by now well, no, maybe I mean, you don't you for, don't know for, that for, though because the judge for, the judge yeah, could course, be involved, <laughs> and then the businessman can be involved, and then the judge and the businessman yeah. get taken down. Yeah. But then you've got that billionaire businessman who's still involved, and then you've yeah. got the royal family. And, and then the when you think about it, the... this you you got to think about it. all the people who are involved, including probably big media heads, everyone. These are all the people with power, and then what they do is they like it's kind of brings back to like. Uh, Oh, don't let Corbyn in because he'll ruin the country just because mm. he's trying to oppose yeah. some big, powerful people. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, yeah. if the machine is well oiled, it works yeah, exactly. Well, so it? if you if you start taking out all these cogs, then they're gonna be like, no, but the machine's gonna die, and it's like, yeah, well, it's a fucking bad machine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It needs yeah. it needs taken out. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, because so like, do you see, like, you see, do you like, you see, see like the go on. Well, I was gonna say I'll bring it back to like Prince Andrew. Yeah. Like the fact that we've all seen that interview. Mm-hmm. We all know what's happened. The yeah. Queen has even got mad at him, banned him from going out and shit. Why is she gonna ban him if he's innocent? Mm. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah. why is she gonna have why is she gonna be mad at him if he's innocent? Yeah. Why is Prince Harry coming out and saying if you knew what I knew? Do you know what yeah. I mean? Oh like, bro, when he said that, that's when I was just like, Oh, okay. No, I'm pissed no, it, off. He should have said yeah. more. He's a waste man. True, but that is very true, actually. And that's, and that's the thing. I think I think all, all these of these halfway people, crooks. all these exactly, all these halfway crooks, like, like just because maybe Prince Harry hasn't done anything, doesn't make him not. You're a liable. spectator. Exactly. Yeah. If I know 100%. someone's murdered someone, then I'm just You're as complicit. guilty. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, 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 I'm complicit, and I think the problem is there's so much backlash. There's so much like branching out that it's going to do it's not just going to be do you know what i mean epstein prince andrew it's also yeah. all the people that was around that and saw that happen yeah. do you know what i mean because yeah. there's so many people i can't answer your question <laughs> yeah yeah that's no, it's true, that's though. that's why i think things like this like it always tends to come out like in years to come when no one's actually able yeah. to be done for anything anymore yeah 100 do, do 100. you know what i mean like oh it was someone in the past but they're dead now like jimmy savile yeah like all yeah. of that yeah and that probably goes a lot deeper than we even know well that was an open oh, secret bro. that was an open secret but why isn't yeah. the head of the bbc or anyone else who's clearly knew about it mm. getting done in it's just him and rolf harris because yeah. why because they're famous yeah, yeah. well i said Cause... i said to my bird she started watching the epstein doc on netflix and i said to her i was like that wouldn't be on there if epstein was alive no nah. They, they're doing this because he's dead and that's the toy that they throw us to chew on for years and mm. years and years and all he really was was someone that gathered information on him or whatever do you know what i mean and like like you were saying like harry like bit these are bit part players to us they seem like huge villains and like but they're they're not even like they're not even big part in their was in his, epstein was an israeli spy well, this, like this is it's it. clearly was, the government of israel needs punishing yeah. like. well, some, someone said that to me recently and said like oh why can't you just do that to israel and i said spies and they were like what and i was like well israel watched the cold war and said oh okay you don't need to do anything but have stuff on other people blackmail that's how that's how this part of the world is run mm. not israel geographically i mean just like the elites yeah. it's run through blackmail you can't yeah. get in if they don't have anything on you because you might find something out and blow the lid. It's quite simple. And through this one simple technique of spying and blackmail, they've effectively got, got control of everything. Even people more powerful 
than the spy, more rich than the spy, can't do anything. You can't do anything. Like you said, you can't do anything to none of them. Mm. Some of them might live in like complete poverty. Do you know what I mean? Not even have any job or money, but you can't get to them. Do you know what I mean? What well, is the thing? Is it well? Let's let's relate what you're saying to like today's issues. So you've got something like the Dominic Dominic Cummings situation. Yeah. The guy literally admitted to dangerous operation of a vehicle whilst being unable to unable to see properly. Yeah. That's illegal. If I don't wear yeah. my glasses while I'm driving, that's illegal. Yeah. The guy's admitted to a crime, but if you put it this way, let's say there's two crimes. There's Dominic Cummings doing that, or there's Epstein doing his thing or whatever. So there's elite person doing one crime. And then you got average Joe doing his crime. Yeah. If I went to the police and I said average Joe just robbed that house, fam, three hours later his door's getting kicked in. Yeah. But if I go to the police and say, uh, uh, Prince Phillips killed someone, it just gets brushed <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like it yeah. just gets brushed off. But it's like, but then I could say, all right, cool. Here's all this evidence of what Epstein's done. Here you go. Go or here's all the evidence of what Prince Andrew's done. Sorry. Here yeah. you go, go arrest him. That they're not gonna do that, and no. then that's what that's that's what brings it back to the whole thing of one rule for them and another rule for us. Yeah, do you know what I mean? It's like yeah. uh, the the socialism for them and the capitalism and, um, for, capitalism us, for yeah. us. Yeah, and it's 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 mental and it is. It's actually when you actually think about the dis like the disparity of like you said, what you can do as one of them. And what you can't do as a normal person, it's it's almost insane that we aren't always talking about it. Do you know what I mean? Like it's just well, that's because the people in charge are the ones who are telling us what to talk about. Yeah, mm. and they're the ones putting up Madeline McCann. Right? Yeah. Who who this gives a it. fuck? This is who it. Do you know what fuck? it is? Yeah. If if the media didn't toe the line. None of them would be as powerful as they are. None of these lies would be as powerful as they are. Do you know what I mean? If the media turned around and said, oh, that story came out a year ago and just held the line, mm. then no one would have been distracted. Do you know what I mean? It's, I, feel, I feel like the media is the one, like, you know, like Helm's Deep, there's like that one bit, this, a weak spot. Mm. <laughs> I feel like that. If there, if there is any chink in the armor, if there is any gaps to the neck, it's that. Yeah, I hear that. Do you know what I mean? Because if if you if you if you the media is the the tool with which they persuade most people before a case is done. Do you know what well, I look mean? At, look at the Epstein. Look at the Epstein thing, for example. This is yeah. one of the big like that. If you really sit there and listen to Sean Atwood stuff. And you look at the research he's done. Yeah. You see how deep this whole yeah. thing is, and it's you see that this is dark. probably this is probably the biggest story of the 21st century. Yeah. Yeah. Like it 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 out so many elites. It yeah. connects so many dots. It does. Imagine it if does this so happened much. in King Henry's time. We'd be studying it at school. No. Imagine if the imagine imagine if this happened in South in something like Iraq. Oh, bro. Bro, it's Ima what you've imagine, ever imagine seen. if the Iraqi, These imagine, devil if the, imagine if the Iranian government were doing what the Israeli government's Bro. doing. It'd be Bro. two different. It'll be two different stories. And why? Oh, because, because, because. Well, I don't. I want to wonder into that. <laughs> you know, you, do, do you, you. I don't know. You just reminded me in it. Like, and this is a hundred percent true. I remember this. The Israelis got caught spying on the White House last year, and no one done anything about it. Everyone was just like, oh, yeah, that's just what our guys do. Do you know what I mean? Because I'm, it's anti-Semitic to bring, bring up something <laughs> yeah, done. Yeah, essentially, yeah. It's anti-Semitic. Imagine, like you say, imagine if, like, uh, if, uh, yeah, Iran was going through all this, like, mate, it's, it's Involved just... Involved in... Actually, well, that's the thing. The, the Mossad have been using these... the call them honey traps, don't they? Yeah, yeah. They call them honey traps. And so we got... But this is the thing, we got all this we got all this stuff going on. And yet still Jelaine Maxwell ain't been yep. arrested. The, well, this is the thing, the news never mentions them. We're not really talking about the case that you was talking about, but we it's, the reason we have to talk about this one is because it's almost the exact same thing. Well, well it's that's the exact it. It's same just problem. perpetually happening as yeah. a cycle. It's not stopping. Exactly. And this this is just this case is just evidence that 
it hasn't just Epstein didn't start it. Epstein is one tiny cog. Exactly. In something that probably spans most countries on the globe. And this is the thing that I think, I think, because uh, I w- I watched that Netflix thing. I was sort of half I haven't asleep. Seen it I, was, yet. I was half asleep when I was watching it, but so I wasn't paying full attention. But it kind of felt like to me that they were really going in on all the abuse stuff, which of course is fucking horrible. Do you know what I mean? Mm. But there wasn't any like talking about the actual reason why they were doing it. They were just making out as though. Oh yeah, Epstein's just some weird guy who likes to do this and blah yeah, blah like blah. Yeah, like he was just. Uh, would they paint him as like lone? Um, what do they call it when it's like a lone terrorist? When he's like actually part of like a far right Nazi militia, and they say he's a lone wolf or whatever. Yeah. It's exactly like that. They painted Epstein out to be like just this really twisted individual. Yeah. When like, do you know what? I've like, and I've seen so much on the BBC, ITV, everything like that. And what I haven't seen is, I haven't actually seen anyone mention Robert Maxwell, Ghislaine Maxwell's dad, like big famous Israeli spy, all like the huge famous cover-up stories and that about him and around him. Mm. Like, surely that's a really obvious avenue to go down. But the media, I mean? the, that's the thing, the media have had such a fucking, they've, they've had the biggest worm on the biggest hook but they went for yeah. the they they, they went, went for now, now yeah they went for Corbyn instead and it's like <laughs> it kind of shows you that they it kind of speaks a lot when they diverge from all this corruption a lot of it involving Israel and then they diverted it to anti-Semitism like it's kind of almost yeah. it's kind of almost laughing in your face in a way yeah yeah because I mean? we're not calling Israelis pedos exactly. it's obviously very governmental and upper class isn't it like it's the government it's yeah. the elites it's not it's nothing to do, yeah, nothing but to they'll do with say, people. they'll look at what nothing we've to do said. with jewish people this is the thing it has nothing to do with judaism jewish people yeah, yeah. anything <laughs> like that nothing to anything, do with <laughs> anything like that this is to do with elite rich billionaires with too much fucking money and sick yeah. minds and they all believe that they drink young blood and it will do this and yeah. that and like well, this they haven't even gone into Epstein's that we haven't even seen inside Epstein's little fucking temple. I know. Like what what I like, know. who's why even the black no book one... hasn't been fully like aired. Well someone I think Sean Atwood had the unredacted one, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sean Atwood's Sean Atwood's a G man. Uh, <laughs> Sean Atwood's yeah. a G. 